Billy Bob Love Charlene. Well, here we go again. Nice little winter cold morning here. Here in Oklahoma, it's been between, I don't know, like zero or 10 degrees for a couple days now. And actually, uh, we had been out of town for the weekend. We had to go see some family in Tejas out in West Texas. Go see them, check on them. Uh, anyhow, we made it back yesterday. Uh, found out some good stuff around here. Yeah, let's get some heat on up in this piece. Actually, Chris came over the day before to get some memory cards from me. And uh, he said, hey man, I got bad news. There's some water flowing across your driveway. Well, when it's zero degrees out and water's flowing from somewhere, that only means one thing. That means the pipe's busted and water's a-flowing. So I told him where the main was and I was gonna have them cut off the water. But when he popped the lid off of it, it was full of water. So I was afraid it was actually broken there. So long story short, uh, people from the water company ended up coming out. They did kill it, but they pumped it out. There's also some little uh, boxes over here they added for uh, the irrigation or whatever. And it was one of those that had busted. So I cut off the valve dip, Whoop, water back on. We've got water in our house. That's a good thing. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. That morning coffee kick in, <laughs> that baby kicks in. You need that water, all right? We need a toilet that can flush ASAP. Besides that, uh, yeah, there's some stuff froze up at the old house too, which I still own currently. So fun stuff there. Get to come back in town and go play with frozen pipes. Uh, this morning we are headed, well, this is supposed to be a shop update video, which we're going to get to later on in the day. This morning we're actually headed to pick up the wagon back from the glass shop. So you get your little wagon update update as well she's an old two for one special <laughs> i hit him with the old smoke screen well the old snow screen the trailer is still covered in snow and as we got up to speed i was dusting everyone out behind us uh just like little rascals in the race or whatever anyhow got about a quarter tank which in this old gas chugging hog ain't gonna get her dead so we're gonna pull into town here get some petrol top her off and then we've got, unfortunately, probably a 45, 50 minute drive one way to where we're headed. And there ain't that much exciting stuff between here and there to show y'all. Just playing. Found something a little exciting. Found slick. <laughs> I texted him, asked if his uh, heater was keeping him warm in the shop. He said he can't keep up. He said, I'll go to Tuttle with you. <laughs> Old love tap looks good in the snow though. Uh, I did not get water at the gas station. I thought I had some. And then I realized I may have water, but it ain't gonna do me no good. Uh, that thing is a solid block of ice. All that's good for right now is being a wheel chalk. Man, it's cold. It is so bad. All the northerners are watching us right now calling us sissies. Well, guess what? We didn't sign up for this crap. It's right? seven degrees, holy crap. It's colder than seven, I think, maybe not. Let's take a moment and appreciate the love tap right there in the snow at an angle though. She looks good. She made it to work. She made it to work. <laughs> Y'all know I mean business if I got the old pimp down jacket. Man, oh man. We're in Cadillac heaven right there. Check it out, guys. Our old friend Wagon. Been here at the gas glass shop. I started to say with Gary, 66 Auto Glass. He's taking care of us. You said you put all new in it? That stuff wouldn't oh, polish up, would it? I couldn't find a back one. Yeah, back glass is impossible. This stuff didn't want to polish up, did it? No. No, I, no. It's weird how it got stained with whatever. All it did was ever sit underneath the tree. Yeah. But uh, man, that baby looks sharp. Yeah. What? We can roll windows up and yeah. down? They were, uh, I don't know if y'all remember or not, but uh, I rolled it down once and yeah, <laughs> once. <laughs> stuff popped, stuff snapped. Hey, looks like we got all new bolts and everything in here. He's got his plum fixed up. New channels. You had to fabricate those, right? Yes. The channels. <laughs> so I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but that's made out of aluminum, it looks like now. Man, oh man. We ain't gonna know what to do being able to roll the windows down and take her up and down the boulevard. New seals in here, as y'all can see. New felts going up and down. The glass ain't gonna rattle. Oh man, we're even sealed up on our wing windows now, guys. She is all the way up at the top. He's just got her all sealed up for us. Of course, new windshield, 
New rubber around there, all reinstalled, looking sharp. What do you think, Slick? Clean. See clean. Wait till we get her back to old Top Stitch Taylor where this interior can get finished. I haven't even showed y'all any of that because that's where it had been before it went here. Uh, old Top Stitch, she started on our carpet kit, making it fit. Make sure we don't hit that paint. We can't afford it. Got our new seal plates on. I'd got them from Classic Industries or whatever. There's y'all a little sample of the material that's gonna be going on our seats. Uh, headliner's already started. That's another reason we had to get it here to Gary uh, because that headliner tucks in along that rear glass. So if we would have brought it here afterwards, we would have had to fix the headliner. So that's all new material up there. Pretty close to the factory color that'd come out. And we're just going for some factory influence on our uh, door panels and our seats but this ain't 100% factory stuff. Rear glass he couldn't replace, but it does look like we got some felts in here to help seal and keep that from rattling and shaking and whatever else. Fabricated this little part oh, yeah? off of two door moldings because there wasn't a piece long enough and I made a little clip just to kind of hide the seam. Oh man, that's creative there. <laughs> two, two door moldings and cap it in the middle. Hey, <laughs> I like it, man. It looks great. You did an awesome job on it. Yeah, the back glass wouldn't clean up in there. We rolled it up and looked at it. We're going to have to... He had a little buffer that started to work on it, so we'll do a little research. If y'all got suggestions, drop it down below. We're going to take a piece of the old glass to take with us to experiment on. And we're going to... We'll get the trailer ready. Maybe give her a little extra. You offered to do that where your body would get warm, huh? <laughs> we got to... We always got to jack that up to get the wagon on because she's... uh. She sits so low. So, yeah, that's probably pretty good. Yeah, it'll work or it won't. In fact, speaking of the old glass, he had pulled it out and it's sitting right here. Show y'all how uh, nice and rusted some of our pieces were uh, that were supposed to be holding our windows. Yeah, ain't much left of that, is there? That's the bad side of pulling some of these vehicles that have been out sitting in the junkyard since 1969. Body held up pretty good shape. Uh, we had to put floors in it. But all that was pretty easy to do. But then just from sitting over the years, all that crap just rained down in them doors time after time and rusted all that crap out. Yeah, he's got us looking good now. You can see where he started to buff on it right there with his little buffer and it started to take some of that off. He just didn't have a very good pad. So he didn't want to scratch it up more than anything. Let's see if this baby wants to start. <laughs> Sit that there. There's her nice thick cushion. You just been pushing it? Yeah. You ain't been starting her up? No. Well, that just means she needs a little pep talk. Hey, girl, it's me, the one who's been taking care of you. I know I ain't seen you in a minute and I left you here, but Gary's been taking real good care of you. And in fact, he's got you smelling like good spray glue or something in here. That's nice. Uh, why don't you say you'd be good in this three degree weather and just start right up for me. Give her a pump or two. You don't need no choke. She's gonna get some fuel to her and she's gonna be happy. There she is. She missed me. Now sitting on this crate and driving is hell. Okay, I can tell you that right now. Back on out of here. She cold. She is cold. Now sitting on this is questionable enough. But then with it sitting so low, hitting them ramps just right and everything, I hate loading this thing on the trailer. I'm trying to hit the brakes. I just can't reach them. Back it up now, y'all. Pull forward this time. She's been sitting, but she's been running, or she's running good. Now we just gotta figure out how to get out of here because the front ones hit the fenders. I'm pretty sure that means the back ones might too. I don't know. Back ones will let you out. <laughs> That's a tight fit. We got a little tight on this side, but she yeah. won't hit. Rubbin's racing. She's good. Well, well, well. We got back. In fact, we went to the Harbor Freighter and even bought us a little scanner thingy. I don't know if I got the right one, just a cheap one. Anyhow, we are at the old shop, at the old house, in fact. Uh, as we got back in town yesterday, I come over here to check on the place. 
and as I walked in the house, I noticed that it was roughly the same temperature that it was outside. Yeah, I walked in here and it was very cold. Whoo, she's warming up. Oh, baby, our uh, icicle's going away. Guys, I'd walked in here yesterday. It was still like that this morning. Oh, apparently our light burned out. This icicle right here was attached all the way up to the sink. This thing was plum covered. And it was 29 degrees in here yesterday. Gas company got here this morning, said it was 23 degrees in here. Right now it is, well, it made it to the 50. We're gonna take it up and keep uh, defrosting it in here. So I, I, on, a, on a furnace, I'm not an appliance expert, but I can tell you on most furnaces, if you start having problems, they got a sight glass. And right there's our sight glass and you can see maybe she's doing a little steady flashing of a green. Then you can go right there and it'll tell you, you know, heartbeat, that little steady flashing, normal operation or no previous diagnostic code. Well, yesterday I was getting six flash, six plus one flashes, soft lockout. Max of four trials for ignition reach, three hour delay. So it was trying to cycle. How we flowing in here, buddy? Unless you got ice on the sink. Yeah. <laughs> no water? So I was trying to start, but I was like, hmm, almost like it has no gas. So I come in here and I had a tried our uh, oven and it didn't light up like that one there just did. And I knew we did not have gas. So we, I don't know guys, we forgot, but basically when we had moved from here, we and, and we got all of our service over there full set, we turned off the stuff here because we didn't think we we're gonna own this house this long. Uh, but then some things have changed where we've kept this a little bit longer. Anyhow, the gas was shut off and we had totally forgot about it. So as we went out of town, I asked Nathan to bump the heater up here, which he turned the thermostat on, but lo and behold, there was no gas to actually heat it up in here uh so yeah everything was frozen pretty solid as y'all could tell we're over here because i'm afraid as this starts thawing out that some of the pipes underneath this house are going to be in bad shape did you turn this one on yeah i'll turn it on it don't yeah she's frozen we should have brought a heater i got a little one. heat gun well, those are copper to the flexi pvc to the copper to the flexi what could possibly go wrong Whoo! it is cold in here <laughs> No, all that's pecs. I'll leave these doors open. Help thaw in there. Well, I think if there's anywhere it's going to be leaking, it's going to be that sink. Northern wall. Uh, that area is the most troublesome underneath the house. I've been underneath there before. As far as, like, you can feel it's just colder there. It's pretty close to a vent over there, which don't help us. Well, I'm going to leave this one a flowing. Just hoping that as this heats up, whatever, that somehow it'll... Uh, help melt some of whatever and i don't think we're gonna really know until we can get over here should have brought the like you said the little dewalt thing and tried to heat on some of that and get water flowing till we get water flowing out of there and we know there ain't stuff busted underneath there i'm not gonna feel better we could go to my shop and get my diesel heater and put it underneath the hole <laughs> burn the house down burn it. it's not that bad Here's the old house, by the way. Some people had asked for a tour of it. I didn't want to just come tour and be like, here's where my children sleep. Here's where me and my wife make passionate live. You know, <laughs> I think that's kind of personal. Uh, <laughs> but here we are. Uh, the old house has been, you know, we're out of it, obviously. Uh, it used to have tiled floor. This was something we're having to fix before we do end up selling it. No, I don't want to rent it out. Please don't suggest that. I don't have time to be a landlord, especially for people who don't take care of crap. But the floor, subfloor was rotten. It was way solid, like way better. Yeah, you could feel it before. It's way she was soft. Yeah. So besides that, he fixed some of the, he put more joists and stuff down in there. Like this was a big project. They, they had full cut out this whole floor and redid it. So that was the one real big hiccup of this place. Now we still got little touch up paints and stuff to do uh, down there where they'd pop the trim on and off. But this was it, kitchen. This was our very awkward living room. It's very skinny, but long. And then down this way, she's a very humble three bedroom. Not very big size. That one's a decent size room. And then this one was mine and mama's actually. Uh, there's our 
Here's our custom closet. Me and old put and pops have built. I hate them little wire rack ones. And um, here's our last little one. Just a very, I don't know, say it's a good house to us. Water heater. I want to check for a leak or two in there. Everything looks good. And our bathroom. Oh, I wonder if we get hot water. That'll melt that ice away real quick. All right, anyhow, until this place defrosts some more, I think we'll be spinning our tires hanging out here unless we want to go get something to try to thaw out the sink. Uh, something else to need to be doing today. I am going to show you all the add-on still. It's just going to end up being the last part of the day. Another thing I need to do is fix Hank's car. Right before we went out of town, Hank called me. Her car's spitting and sputtering and yanking and pulling and traction control and engine lights flashing. And uh, just knowing that alone, I already knew we were dealing with a uh, misfire. That's why we stopped earlier and got the code reader. So I think we'll probably let this place thaw out and go see what we can get into over there. Well, before we leave, I remembered out in the merch building, I had this little heater I used to use. And uh, this stuff in here is frozen. I moved our little flexi hose there. You can just hear the water snap and snap, snap. So we're going to crank this baby to kill mode. We're going to give her all she's got. She'll be all right, like right there. Shouldn't take too long. Lucky we ain't putting her in there and closing the door. <laughs> really a ticking time bomb. We'll find out if it's leaking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out if there's natural gas leaking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. We believe in you. Oh, yeah. Come on. You dang right. She ain't even been down there a couple minutes. So it's just frozen right up there. Probably would have never had a problem if the heat would have never been shut off. Go figure. <laughs> I was worried that we were going to thaw this out and it was actually still going to be frozen underneath the house. So that's a good thing if thawing up here, we already have it going. That means it didn't freeze down underneath the house, which means our likelihood of busted pipes underneath the house just went down significantly. Now that's up here, of course. That ain't going to do us much good for... I just tested our shower. She's no flow. That baby's spitting now. She's going in a flowing. Well, we got some good inside victories going. We're not going to know about the uh, washer, dryer, and or dishwasher situation. I'd rather just let the house full thaw, uh, which it should do in the next day uh, since it's heating up. But the shower is not kicking on water. And we got water at the toilet. We got water at that sink. So either the stuff going to the shower independently is frozen or i just want to kind of glance underneath here the uh to see if we can see that way just make sure like it didn't pop a coupler or we see some running water or a big old icicle yep 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 come on oh, she's frozen to the ground careful now don't scratch my paint <laughs> how'd you hit it with the brick <laughs> Try to knock that ground down. We got some wiggle room. Woo! Oh, pr plumber strap over there made me nervous. I thought that was it. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Let's see if that's the. Okay, it's in metal pipe, which makes me feel a little better. Uh, so maybe it's just frozen underneath here. I don't see any scary hanging icicles or nothing, or something looks like it's been leaking. So I bet if we just let the house thaw out and heat up, uh, she just needs a little time. I think we're going to be okay here, guys. I think we got lucky. Had a frozen house here. Had a busted pipe at the new place. But all in all, I think we're going to be a-okay. That old girl warmed up. Oh, a little backfire Betty. We're gonna go uh, back out to the new house now to mess with Hank's car. I'm gonna go get a drink for me and him. He's gonna gather up his diesel heater as that uh, thing warms up for us. We're gonna heat my garage at the new place and work on Hank's car in there. It's like 18 degrees out now and the sun's out. So to me, it ain't even that bad. I ain't even been wearing my coat. I just been in my long sleeve and my sweatshirt. Uh, when that wind ain't blowing as bad and that sun's out, I don't know, it makes it feel 30 degrees warmer to me. I was gonna pull the car outside, but I think Slick's a little cold, so I said, uh, 
I said, we get that old heater if you want. Toast up that garage. We'll be in there working in damn t-shirt and shorty shorts. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. I don't know that's what we need. So you're running like a charm or what? Yeah. You popped some vacuum caps when she bought backfired? <laughs> oh. Splitting them. Got that old got that old power pop. Yeah. A little cold with her little mini tunnel ram over there backfiring. Pa pow pa pow. <laughs> Ultimate cold air intake right now. Here's what's left over from the split pipe. <laughs> Can y'all tell where the water had been running across here? Got a skating rink. Use a little electric receiver. Woo! Got the old daddy long reaches I forgot about. I tried to look at the thermostat in here to see how cold it is. Room temperature, low. <laughs> All it says is low. I got a thermometer over here. I'm gonna see what it says. I'm just curious. Or I thought I had one over here on the toolbox. What the hell, over? It's right there on the wall. It was right in front of me. It ain't that cold. Probably about 37 degrees. It ain't too bad. I don't know, it almost feels better out here in the sun to me. <laughs> Slick's not convinced. I keep trying to convince him it ain't that bad. It's, it's not too shabby today. It's not bad right here. The wind ain't blowing. The wind's not blowing, yeah, but when the wind blows, ooh. That's what's left of old battery. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I just missed a little bit, and I can pick it up over there instead. Walked in here. This <laughs> heater was running for, I don't know, five minutes max. Yeah. Really. It feels good in here. He's like, at least knock the edge off. It's like, I'm about to take the sweater off <laughs> hot in here. <laughs> I guess we could start with a little diag diagnosis. Oh, man. The secret's going to be out, Slick. Don't look over here. Don't look over here. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's smoking. Me and Slick fall over in about five minutes. Call the authorities. Uh, I don't know nothing about code reading. I just, maybe we can plug it in there and it'll tell us. When, I know it's a misfire. So I'm just assuming coil pack. I did get spark plugs. We're gonna change all of them. So we can plug this in. Maybe it'll tell us specifically and then we'll know which one to look for as we check plugs. But I'm doubting it's the plugs that's the problem. It'll probably end up being a coil pack going out. I try to avoid working on anything that requires one of these. As a general rule of thumb, it's too new. Well, that was easy enough. I plugged it in, skipped this, skipped that, and the first thing that popped up, Chevrolet, a cylinder three misfire detected. All right, I don't know what we're looking at now, uh, but we know we're looking for number three. We'll figure out how to do more of that thing in a minute. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna have to take any of that off. I think we can pull this cover here and yeah, be able to get to it all. We'll probably have to pull this. Yeah, I ain't got enough ugly in my fingers. Let's see if them old long reaches can do. <laughs> what is this though? Why is there a vent on this? I just assumed this was a cover. Surely the spark plugs are underneath this, right? Yeah, that should be That's what those are. Unless the PCV. Goes right here. Oh yeah, all built into this yeah. cover. Kind of funky. I think it's actually a four cylinder. I don't know if one, two, three, well, five, there's four. yeah. I did think it was a three cylinder the other day though. I don't know why. I thought I'd read on these that they were, but no, she's a four cylinder. Only a like one point two liter or something, four liter maybe. All right, that right there should get us to most of everything. We get the bolts out, but we broke the intake. <laughs> I wonder what old Bill's doing right now. It's way too cold for Bill. If it gets down below 50, he don't get out of hibernation. He's definitely done 100 bong rips today. I can tell you what he's not doing. Working? That, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> There she goes, pop her up. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, so that O-ring seals right there, flows through this, and then over and up out of there. Interesting. What a stupid design. Just to have a cover on there that says s Tech 2 16 valve. Somebody was paid a lot of money to design that. Yeah, all we had to do was put a port right there and run that hose to it. Anyhow, there we go. You can see our coil packs now. I'm assuming just one, two, three, four. All right, I'm pretty sure this one here is number three, so we're gonna start by pulling it. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like uh, Planko yeah. from uh, The Price is Right. She gone. She Plankoed her butt all the way down there to the splash pan somewhere. Nope, I see it. We ain't gonna get it, but I see it. Where? It's up that way. With a magnet, we could get it, no problem. Shove my arm down in here and break break on the AC lines or something. It fell. But it just sounded like it landed on their splash pan. Because I'm sure there's 13 pieces of plastic. Oh yeah, she's down at the very bottom now. I see her. It's right up underneath this. You got something, didn't you? Oh, ta-da. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to do better about dropping bolts. Of course, we probably can't pick that up out of there. Without taking that off. Without <laughs> popping that. <laughs> but I really don't want to pull that intake off. Or whatever that is. Yeah, that's the intake. Mm -hmm. Hell with that. We're going to have to figure out how to do them plugs from pigtails from here. Uh, looks like it's got the red thing we need to slide out. And then push down on that tab and shove the whole thing back, hopefully. All right. Man, you simply, simply pull up. Yeah, yeah. Simply lift on your coil pack. And then break your intake. <laughs> All right. So we do not know, but we're just assuming this right here is causing our misfire. We are going to pull that spark plug and uh, see what she's looking like down in there. Oh. Yeah. Crunchy. Yeah. Oh. I'm not for certain, but I, for some reason, think when we bought this car, they said they had serviced it with spark plugs. Don't quote me on that, though. I could be wrong. Well, threads are a little rusty looking. And yeah, there's some corrosion on that. But I guarantee you that wasn't our misfire. That would still fire. A little interesting here. Now, I didn't bring a spark plug gapper, but I just kind of eyeballed it. And Eagle Eye says that's pretty close. Because we went to eyeball that one that says GM right there. Looky there. That's a crack. And you can tell that crack's been there for a while. So we may be losing our spark out of there. That, that may be our misfire, possibly. So right there we got some GM AC Delcos is what they are. Let me drop it and break it. That'll be smart. Let's go back with four new of these puppies right here. Everyone's like, I came here for the shop add-on video. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there, damn it. Got every update in the world in this video. <laughs> House update, wagon update, Hank's little spark update. Adam get that heat going over there on that new shop. That's about to be an update. Give her a little torque. All right, you did a little comparing. Yeah, looks pretty close to me. Send it and hope for the best. Don't let that bolt whoop you. Uh -huh. Down on there, good. Ooh, cross threaded tight. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Can't imagine why she don't bottom out or tighten up. Is Just playing. That's for our cover. Actually, that right there's our factory one. It's longer than that one. Yeah, so this one should bottom out and tighten up. And that's tightening up better anyhow, as far as by hand goes. So that makes me feel better. Much better. Just slide your pigtail on, pull your connector up, or your little red lock knot connector, and that should be good to go. Yeah, let's pull all the remaining three though. And we're gonna knock out all these plugs real quick. Oh, that lock is lost permanently. We gotta go further back than that, I think. Okay. No, that's good. Overachiever, don't pull number three. Break <laughs> it too. Boom. Right. Put her in there, give her a little twist, spin, I mean. Push. Right off. We don't need a lock on number one anyhow. She ain't in it. She'll she ain't gonna go nowhere. Get her little fancy dust cover on there and she'll be solid. Worst part's pulling the coil off. <laughs> I'm trying. She just ain't strong enough. Ah, little honorary things. Get me a slide hammer in a minute. <laughs> just obliterate it. <laughs> All right, she popped. I don't mean it's gonna spin out of there. Wonder if we get away with pulling that little bracket right there, if it would spin. 
This one we're hitting a bracket. I'm hoping if we pull this metal bracket that's removable, that baby will rotate that away and come up out of there. You gotta be super careful around the intake now. She ain't got no support. Right there's where the mouse got in there one time. All right, move her little bracket. Please be good to us. Oh yeah, that's why she's removable, sure enough. I feel like we're da uh, living dangerously with that bracket off there. That plastic's pretty tough, but it just feels dangerous. It's still plastic. Someone shared a thing on the Facebook or whatever the other day, and it showed inside a, they said an oil pan of a new car or whatever. And I swear the oil pan itself is made out of the plastic now. I think they're molding the oil pans and O-ring sealing them. Plastic oil pan, sounds good to me. This son of a buck better not have no plastic oil pan. You better check. You better check. <laughs> Don't matter, Chevrolet's gonna be fixing it. <laughs> Something happens. I'm gonna put a foot up someone's hind end. Yep. Yeah. Once again, she was firing, but a little corrosion down there. We're uh, she gonna, hey, when you pick up two or three horsepower and something that only makes 16, she gonna that's, a, that's a significant difference right there. Yep. Yeah. Gap looks good to me. Send her home? Send it. No, no, no cross threads allowed here. Just on the oil, or coil, hold hey, down bolts. No! Oh! oh, not the base. Oh, camera, got them cold brittle bones apparently. <laughs> Cause that sucker just snapped. Need some of them good high quality zip ties like Chevrolet used right here. I can get down with that engineering. She pushed down good? Yeah. Did we lose that bolt? Oh, I put them down here, I forgot. Oh, I set on your phone too. She's snug. Be careful with that long one, or that side one going in at an angle. This did move a little bit. Snug her down. Snug her down. Beautiful job, well done. Oh, guys, I was just gonna finish up two and four and tell y'all we were done. Went to pop that off there, and sure enough, the boot ripped off the damn thing and stayed down in there. So now we gotta play fish the parts. And be careful, cause it, okay. there's a spring. But we do got our one bad coil we can rob parts from too. Well, this is rather unfortunate cause that don't look like it's gonna be fun. Uh-huh. I kinda worked her over with the screwdriver. Slick went up and got her pick set, so. Uh, what do you call that? Tragedy adverted. Well, <laughs> we got one more to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not count our chickens yet. Yeah. Fired her up. She's running, anyhow. Uh, I'd hit erase. One moment, please. Erase was successful. Auto link in progress. No, we don't want to, whatever. Uh-oh, engine misfire detected. Shut the engine off, place the ignition on. Ignition on, yes. One moment, please. We ain't gonna have misfire right now, she ain't running. <laughs> Permanent, <laughs> you can't erase it. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> she said the check engine light was flashing and it was saying traction control and all kinds of stuff i don't see it doing that it ain't got a check engine light flashing got good news little pink tampon seems to be rocket shipping down the road again no engine lights she ain't pop buddy that's a custom feature okay that gets extra airflow in the, in there <laughs> this is custom damage left over from when she wanted to rear in that car y'all see that's professional that's a zip tie there and y'all see that nail polish color they had that matched pretty close most people don't even notice that that's because i do a really good job repairing vehicles here at puddin's collision repair oh i hear some water flowing oh yeah we thawed out that's good that is good my dad called me as i was trying to get that boot off he said what happened i said well the boot just tore he said shit and i said yeah i know and then he said well did your house freeze up i said both of them he said what do you mean both of them i said the other one had an icicle going all the way down it's 29 degrees in there he said shit i said yeah i know i thought i was gonna have a bunch of busted pipes uh but i think we're like i said we got real lucky I think Slick's gonna take that old bathroom for a spin, see how, how she's working now, see how she's operating. We may have went to the taco boy and got some food. We also may have seen a sweet long bed, square body on some polished slots. Holy temperature! Man, that's only one running? It's 65 degrees in here. You've got to be shitting me. Is that the pair of them or just one? 
heat and oh, dude, yeah. heat holy spoiled 65 we ain't even been gone an hour no so it took it from what were we 35 to 40 somewhere in between there to 65 i wonder if that's going to catch up and shut off i'm curious to see guys i don't know enough about heating a big old shop like this we did spray foam it uh but over here everyone was worried it wasn't going to heat over here but nice. yeah it's nice so i was kind of worried that these things i don't know like i said i don't know enough about it i kind of had an idea of putting a slide curtain on here and cutting off this half because as y'all know we really ain't had to work over there much uh, so to me it don't make sense to really be heating it unless we have to uh we we mainly work over here but i cannot believe oh that is awesome that's nice Oh, Ruger, give me my fancy water. <laughs> I'm about to celebrate. We done went full bougie. Half, half, the, half the audience just unsubscribed. They done made it. They, no more struggle for those guys. They've got it easy now. I show up in the morning and all your stuff's here. You're working on it. <laughs> got the old planting hammer fired up. <laughs> oh, grill's loud. Uh, torch came in finally. Or uh, I guess I should say I finally ordered the right one. Their website's a pain. I swear their website said for this torch I needed this adapter, and you do not uh, ever last. Make your freaking website more user friendly. I've been on there three times, and I know I ain't the brightest man, but damn, we're we're in 2024. Y'all could make it. If I can't navigate it, you think these old guys can? No offense, old guys, but I know a lot of y'all don't like the internet. I'm not very good at it myself. Uh, but I can usually get by, but if it takes me three tries to get the proper torch, man. Anyhow, slicks here, which is convenient since that came in. We'll see if we can't tune on this. Y'all know he has a lot more TIG experience than I do, so get opportunity to practice some and have him help me set her up. Your car is good to go. Yeah, that's your, that's your custom hood scoop. Love you, kids. She well and good? She's the new flexi head, by the way. Fancy. Fancy. How y'all like that loud welder? It's like you're in Mortsky's shop when he runs his heater, huh? I gotta yell, because if I did talk normal like this, you probably wouldn't hear me. Don't tell him to get a new heater. I, I've been on it. I told him to get rid of that loud thing. It's gonna make Mojo go deaf. Need some clean metal. You clean up both sides good. One, we got more to practice on. Two, we're gonna have a better ground on the back side. And none of that's gonna fix my shaky hand. I don't know why I can't tick well. <laughs> Quit shaking, old man. <laughs> Is this blowing air over here? Yeah. Can't even weld next to the welder. Losing my damn gas. Blow my gas, I'll move your ass. Well, we welded. I was concentrating. So that's my problem with TIG welded. I gotta concentrate on that, putting that into the puddle. I don't have depth perception. So that's where most of my focus ends up going. So then I don't pay attention to my filler angle where I'm trying to bring it in. If you bring it in at the wrong uh, angle, you melt it before you get it there. And then, so I'm trying to concentrate on all that. Of course, you watch your pedal size to make sure you ain't giving it too much amperage, but you control that with your foot. So you're doing all this stuff. And then in this case, I was trying to do all that and I forgot to pay attention. And I kind of went in a straight line, but straight line went off to the edge of the material. That's progress though. Start to do a little something here. She will. Well, I did a few little practice runs there and I finally just, uh, I tried to come in on a new way with my filler and I ended up touching my tungsten, which ain't no good, but that's better than I had been doing, I reckon. They ain't perfect, but if we were doing like some sheet metal to grind away, who gives a damn? We're gonna do stuff more suspension related or some fancy motor mounts for an upcoming Model A. I might have to t tune this in for more of a heavier gauge stuff anyhow. I'm sure I'll build those 3 16 at least, probably quarter inch just because I have it. That's a little lot different too when you start doing joints. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, and which I've practiced more on the bigger stuff than I have thinner stuff. But this was just to see if our uh, welder was going to work again and then try to figure out a little bit of a angle with the torch and just see how slick kind of moves along because that's what I have problem is. I get bad about putting my hand down on this and then you're trying to drag your hand which of course kind of wants to skip as it release and there ain't no consistency there. I got this tungsten sharpener from the Eastwood not too long ago. Try it out. I figured if I'm gonna be getting trying to use this more I'm gonna be messing it up more. I'm messing up my tungsten more which means obviously more sharpening so I try to uh, make that as easy as possible. Slick, Slick's trying to, I don't know, looks like he made an old rock guy trying to stretch his back out like, oh! That just popped my back, felt amazing. Am I shaking? Yeah. I'm a shaker, guys. I always have been, so that's why it's also kind of hard for me. But right there on that one, I was starting to get consistent. You can see right there at the end, boop, boop 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 getting a little consistency going anyhow we'll kind of uh we'll kind of play with it as we can uh depending on what projects we got coming up and if we know we're gonna work on thicker stuff we'll get some scrap thicker stuff together and practice on it before we go for the actual project and uh, practice makes perfect to an extent for most individuals you're still gonna be capable of something or you're not gonna be capable uh I do think I'll get better if I do practice, but do I think I'm going to ever get rid of that shaky hand that I've had my whole life? It ain't going to go away, guys. Uh, that's why I used to, uh, back in the day when I built the frame of this thing, I would spend so much time getting part of the frame rails or suspension, all the stuff tacked up, and then I would chug like two beers, three beers, let those babies sit in and just relax me, and then it was weld time. It would relax me where I didn't shake as much, and I would uh, just go to town on welding. That used to be my old uh, old secret technique there. So man, old Slick, yeah, she might be frozen in here. Man, Slick was just kind of going over some ideas I'd talked to him about. Over there, moving my fab stuff to the main side of the shop, so when we need it, we're not going plumb over there or whatever. And uh, yeah, we kind of got a game plan that's gonna be for another day. Uh, but the point of this video was to give y'all a shop update. So I figured I may want to come in here and give y'all a shop update. <laughs> well, a good update is we still don't have lights. So we'll open that up where y'all can see. But what you can see we have is some framing going on. So like I told y'all, we were gonna cut the sucker in half. Well, there's our wall cutting this baby in half. She's cut. Uh, now going around, you'll see we're framed 10 foot up. And that's exactly how the other shop, we did it. And we're doing the same thing here. This is all gonna get insulated. Walls are gonna be spray foamed. Up the ceiling and everything's gonna be spray foamed. Once all that's done and the wiring's done, OSB plywood will go on the framing portion. And then everything's gonna get painted gray. Uh, it's exactly what we did over there. And we know it works because our heater just got that baby up to 65 and shut off for quite a while. So that's good. That means over there sealed up. I think it was off for at least 10 minutes plus before it kicked on again. Uh, seemed like anyhow. Don't quote me on that. Maybe we should time it. Anyhow, <laughs> we framed up all the way around, cutting it off in half. This side is only 10 foot up, period. And in here you can't see diddly do. Let there be light. Oh, boot scoot mucin. This wall, she's a 2 by 6 wall, okay? She ain't no little rink deep 2 by 4 she's a 2 by 6 uh, So, over here, exact same thing, where they did the add-on. Of course, we had cut through, which y'all have already seen, but now you can kind of see the backside of it. It's a little different because we had a floor drop and everything, but I'm okay with that right there. You paint it all gray, it kind of disappears. It'll look just fine. Of course, this is all gonna get spray foamed and uh well you know what it's gonna be a little interesting over here where the door has to open i don't know what we're gonna have to do there we'll figure it out they have started to wire as you can see they've just kind of set anyhow where the boxes are gonna go the little wiring guys they ain't been out here as often as they're supposed to be in so hopefully we can get them out here and get rocking and rolling on this uh obviously we still need wired and then the little bit of plumbing that's gonna be required 
uh, before we can go forward with our insulation. Now, as far as what I've got framed, we'll step in here. This will be your front office. Here's our front door, entry door. So you'll come in here. This is gonna be my office. Uh, I think I've been saying on the channels for years and years and years that one day I'd have an office and one day this is gonna in fact be that office. And from inside the office, you're only allowed to walk into right here. This is all the merchandise area. This is gonna be where we start sitting our shelves, where we package our merchandise out of and everything else. And then being able to walk right into here. I told y'all my plan was to do a small gym. Well, this is gonna be the small gym area, big enough for us to do just a couple different sets of weights and whatever, uh, family. And even Nathan's very excited about having some access to some gym to be able to kind of work out, but hopefully not have to go have a gym membership or whatever. Ain't nobody trying to go over the top. We're just trying to take care of ourselves. And then come in down here from this end, this is gonna be our bathroom. So you get access to these two only from the merchandise area. And then right here, as you see, we got a set of stairs. Well, that's because we're gonna frame up that and that's a lot of wasted space upstairs if we don't do something with it so one other thing you're going to notice is i was undecisive because i didn't have no plans drawn up for this because we're in pot county by golly and we can do what we want and uh right about where that door is was 10 foot so i made the decision to have them frame over 11 foot where this wall wasn't just right on the door i just didn't like that then as we got to go up top the problem became our truss was set exactly at 10 foot, which as you could imagine is a problem with the truss hanging down and what's gonna be your bedroom. Very simple set of stairs these gentlemen whipped up, but I really like these things and how they, uh, how they did them for as simple as they are. So you come up here and you can see our ledge we're gonna have. And that's because we did do 11 foot but then underneath here, especially because we're going to have to cut out the truss and some of y'all's going, oh no, you can't do that. Well, that truss is sitting right on that and this is structurally, structurally sound. Uh, I'm not worried about it. I know some of y'all are, okay? Y'all think this SOB is going to fall apart. But anyhow, uh, we had to support that. Like we said, truss is cut out and we just came over up here to the 10 foot that way we're right underneath the truss. That way we don't have the truss hanging down in the bedroom. And the framer didn't like that idea. He said, it's gonna look goofy because we're gonna have a ledge. And I said, that's perfect. And he said, what do you mean? I said, you give me a ledge, that means I've got somewhere to set some old oil cans, maybe an old bicycle or two, a couple old signs or something. You give me a ledge, I'm gonna decorate it. And when he uh, seen what I was thinking there, of course he's seen how the other shop was kind of styled. Uh, he was on board with putting a ledge there because he thinks it's going to be cool too, all decorated. But up here, we've got us a nice little rail set up. This, of course, free floats out, no support underneath it. But that's because those are the joists that's full tied in across the roof of that whole setup. And this is the Mortsky suite right here. So this will be a guest bedroom, more or less. Mortsky comes into town. Uh, this thing will get it heat and cooled over here. This will be a bedroom where should be big enough. We can put a, a little bed, full, no, queen size bed probably, and still have room for a decent little sofa, maybe a desk. This will be a closet where you got a place to actually hang your clothes and hide your suitcase or whatever. And then down on this end, this is gonna be the utility closet. So furnace will end up in here and our hot water heater for the bathroom below will end up in here. Just a good old fashioned utility room. And uh, old Sir Mortsky or like her, uh, Ashley's brother, anyone who comes in town is going to be welcome to stay here with us, obviously. And when you're, when you're right here, you got the best, the best view in Pot County. First you look out and you see that beautiful dumpster. And then you just look over the western horizon. I mean, you can't see deadly right now because of that bright sun. So as you try to enjoy the view, you can't see nothing. But it is just hands down the best view. It actually is a really cool view, guys. It's hard to show you all on camera, but it's cool to be able to stand up here and kind of look over the, the place. Look over the old Puddins Acres, old Petang Ranch, or Pot County Homestead, whatever you want to call it. Iron River. Yeah, 
I can see that creek where my Chevy Love got stuck and embarrassed me. But don't worry, we got something coming for you right around the corner. Oh, oh creek. <laughs> we'll see what's what. <laughs> so, yep, she's framed. Like I said, wiring gets done. I gotta get order lights tonight. I forgot to order those for the electricians. They're gonna need them to be able to install them. So we'll go finish wiring, a little bit of plumbing for there. I'm still trying to figure out how I can do a sink in the uh, work side of the shop where when we just need to wash hands, we have one over there where we ain't gotta come over to make this one all nasty like a shop sink. Y'all know there's a difference in a sink and then a shop sink. Shop sink, you, you know, it's gonna be black in a year and you don't care about it. Uh, but a little bit of plumbing to do. And then the insulation is already taken care of. Had my insulation guy come over and check it out. Keith takes extremely good care of me, uh, hooks me up great on insulation. So that's already figured out. And then we'll insulate her. This side will get finished out with the OSB. And then this side will be ready for gray paint like the other side of the shop is. We may, my wife said we should stain the staircase like a brown color to make it stand out. <laughs> Slick said, mm -hmm. I can see it. I think it'd be cool. But the only difference is she wanted light and I was picturing it dark, a nice dark brown. Slick said paint it gray and send it. So either way, this will all be painted. We are gonna figure out a PFS merch sign to put up there and uh, take a little pride in this place build up the the dream of i don't know i have everything in my head pictured as a, a vision for the business and when i i started out of that little 10 by 12 shed we started out of for the merchandise uh y'all seen even from that I, I finished it out and that's all i could work with at the time but i still pictured it a certain way and i wanted it nice in there and when you're working in there i don't want it to feel like you're out in a damn shed just barely getting by and same in this place i want to finish it out nice enough with some paint on osb but in the offices we are gonna uh, have to do some sheetrock work so these will get sheetrocked i'm sure we'll put in simple flooring of some sort and some basic uh base trim they'll be finished out nothing over the top super duper fancy or nothing but just something to make them feel legit and not just you know rough wood framed whatever uh of course before all that we still got hot water heater will be part of the plumbing and hvac is its whole you know separate thing too we're planning on feeding down out of that floor and running one across to all three of those and this side over here is not we're gonna stub out and do what we got to do where it's easy to put heat and air in here uh if we want to and the wi-fi is gonna be nice because in that metal building when you close that sucker up with it metal, being metal and insulated i don't hardly have regular old cell phone service and even with that wi-fi being good and strong over here with this all closed up I barely have it over there. I'm actually going to have to add a booster between here and there, they said, which ain't no big deal. Uh, I don't know enough about that different kind of crap. I just know that we should be able to add one right on the other side of the wall over there and then be set up on that side. So there's your shop update on top of knowing we've got function and heat over there. Some people didn't realize that that had heat as well. I guess they thought I just put in the air conditioners over there, but those are package units. Yeah, um, I've seen some comments where people are like, can't believe you spent all that money on air conditioning, but didn't think about heat. Well, guys, we've been waiting on the gas company. I mean, to, to get heat to there, they couldn't just tap off the service line to my house. We had to have gas ring from all the way down past my gate again. Uh, so a whole nother gas line is now ran on the property. Outside the shop on its own meter, whole nother gas uh, meter set up. And after they ran the gas line, they just never showed up to set the meter. And we took a few phone calls and some sorting through some baloney to finally get them out here, which they did this morning. And no sooner did they get out here that my buddy came over here, verified everything and fired those units up for us. He did his test run and now we got heat. So it wasn't from lack of me trying. We were, we were trying and doing what we could do to get some heat. Uh, but sometimes the balls just out of your hands you know and it's in someone else's on 
when stuff can happen and if it's allowed to happen and you know especially the utilities and companies and blah 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 how many fiber optic lines gonna cut through yeah how, <laughs> how many fiber optic cables we need <laughs> two weeks ago because they had cut it for the third time <laughs> <laughs> they come to note this is my life for the last two years and i'm not complaining guys i i understand we are blessed beyond belief and i cannot thank you guys enough for the support uh, that has made these add-ons and changes and stuff possible it's literally been life-changing but i'll be damned if i ain't allowed to be frustrated <laughs> because when they come out and they bury your fiber optics in conduit and then say oh it's fine blah 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 and then you have that stuff flagged and they flag the wrong stuff they flag the old stuff so then the one guy hits the stuff with a trencher and it tears it up so then they come out and replace it again and you're told you're good to go we this that it'll never happen again and then they come out to run the stuff to here and the people installing the same fiber optic hits the stuff that is installed a week ago so guess what then they had to run it to the house again for the third time and it's just always well you know frozen broken pipes and stuff later when you're building craps up it, it's a freaking crap house is what it is it's uh most people don't actually care about what they're doing to the point of being proactive of making sure they're not going to hit stuff or ask the right questions anyone who could ask me where stuff is around here i could point out every single one even though our whole property has basically been flagged for two years and people seem to miss them flags and they don't ask me which is fine but then, you know, everyone just tries to get in and out, make their quick buck, it seems like. And with doing so, people can tear some shit up along the way. <laughs> you know, like, you can tell it's stressing me out. Like, I'm half disappointed in people just thinking about it. And I'm like, guys, I, I've told Ashley, if we were ever to leave here for whatever reason, I don't ever want to build again. I want to find a place we're happy with and just buy it. Because the... You work hard for your money and you spend that money and then people try to do the in and out, make a quick buck, or they just tear shit up along the way. And it's just, man, it'll frustrate you just because, you know, you want to get your dollars worth and sometimes you just feel highly taken advantage of by people. Sometimes you tell them to come do a job and they just never show up, you know? You know? Like the, the fence that was started eight months ago? Bluetooth fence. Yeah, old Bluetooth <laughs> fence. Hey, that guy was supposed... So I found someone to replace that. He's the right guy. He's supposed to come this afternoon. I'm glad you just said that. I think he probably forgot about me because <laughs> I say this afternoon like it ain't five o'clock already. So speaking of that, it's five o'clock. Today's actually Tuesday. It's the day that I was... I missed... My video going out on Monday, so today the John Deere video is going out. It should be uploaded, but I got to go add the thumbnail and title and all that good stuff and make sure our merchandise is on the website. So this is a good time to conclude and get that done because that's the most important part of the job is making sure that video is going out. Like I said, we had to go take care of some family in Texas, see, see them, try to cheer them up, bring some spirits up around there, and uh, keep them fighting the good fight, which is pushing forward and loving life. Uh, speaking of all that, Thank you guys so much. I know I just said it, but thank y'all for supporting and keeping me pushing forward and loving life and keeping me highly motivated. Uh, I know we've been doing a lot of stuff with the junkyards and well it runs, but I had to do what I had to do knowing we were going to be out of town for a couple weeks here or there at different times and all that. So as we roll into 2024 now, I'm trying to build as much as we can build. We got some good ones coming around the corner. I promise you, me and Slick's been... Uh, We've been granting about a couple of them. We're getting ready to get started on here soon. So I thank you guys for being here. Put us fabshop.com for that good quality merchandise. We happen to be sold out of stuff because my schedule's all confused. Uh, I know we got some good stuff coming right around the corner, so be patient with us. Uh, I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Patreon. And I will see you guys next time. But do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Hot damn, there's so much BSRE, we had to start a whole channel for all the extras. Be sure to go check out Puddin's Fab Shop if you ain't seen that baby yet. Come on!